how do you become a developer? Just write as much code as you can, read as much code as you can, just talk to as many programmers as you can. Just Programming is overwhelming. I started as a young kid. It really isn't overwhelming if you think about it logically or you learn um, semantic, symbolic logic. Any resources to study comp sign? I honestly think the best way to do it is to open an interpreter or REPL and just go to work. In fact, if you go to replit.com, um, I didn't realize this, but replit is like incredibly intricate now. It used to be, I used to think it was, I made the mistake of thinking it was like JS fiddle or something. It's actually remarkably great. So yeah, this is replit. You can basically learn how to code from here to making like a fully featured app all within this one site, which is pretty, pretty amazing. How do you learn things faster? And they have something called Ghostwriter. Ghostwriter is neat. Using Ghostwriter, it's sort of basically AI that writes some of the code for you. Um, you can actually, this is much, much better than what it used to be. When I was a kid, you have to open a program and basically just figure out how it works. And sometimes the way you'd figure it out is you'd like delete stuff and change stuff and see if how it would mess up the program or different, you know, make the program different. And then you'd run the program and say, oh, okay, I get this. But if you saw like a class definition or something, you wouldn't really immediately understand what that meant. Um, you'd have to go find a book or something. Here, you can kind of do something a lot better. This is what the amazing thing. You have all these advanced tools, like this is a database called Postgres as a SQL database, structured query language. And uh, SQL is really important. It's one of the main skills I would learn. So the simplest way to think about programming is, is starting with variables. Variables are just boxes with names that store things, almost like a labeled box in your home, right? So this is really pretty easy. You have a box and you, maybe you call it age. The name of the box is here, is the label on the box, it says age. It's pretty obvious you can put different numbers in here, right? So maybe you put a number like, I don't know, 25. Okay, so the variable age contains 25. And the way maybe in a lot of different programming languages you can set that as var age equals 25, something like that. And if you wanted to change it, maybe you could say as your next line of code, in the old days you used to have numbered lines of code, so this might be number line 10. And maybe a next line would be number line 20 and you'd say age, uh, equals 30, you just change it. And the age went up by five. And you don't need to use the semicolon if you don't want to in this language that I just made up. And you basically erase what ends up happening in the computer is the computer will erase the 25, right? And now you got a 30. And of course you could do a lot more with programming than just this, but let's say you wanted to do that. And then maybe you want to say line 30 print age and on your screen would, would pop up 30, right? This is your monitor. This is your computer monitor over here. This is the kind of hard drive of the computer, basically the memory. So that's a, like a very simple program. It's very easy to understand and you just can't get too overwhelmed. And basically as you go on, what you learn is that these things are called keywords like var in this case is a keyword. And you learn different keywords. Here's another one, print. And as you kind of like learn a programming language, you memorize what all the keywords do. And then you basically speak it like you speak English. One of the keywords that's not obviously a keyword, it's actually called an operator is the equal sign. It's called the fancy word, it's called the assignment operator. But it's an operator. This is not a conditional of equality. This doesn't test anything. This says 25 goes in this box. This says 30 goes in this box, the box called age. These are called variables. That's what the var stands for. Modern programming languages don't have number lines, of course. That goes, that comes from a long, long time ago. But that's how I learned with number lines. It's much more liberating and powerful without the number lines, but you can, uh, the number lines in the old days, it kind of gives you some structure. Um, a lot of times today we refer to lines of code as well. Like say, oh, in line 24, you have a mistake, but they're not formal lines. The reason we had lines before is you could actually loop between lines and say, well, go to this line or go to that line. And this was not a great way to do things, but you know, we didn't know any better back then. So that's a little bit about programming. Um, there's a lot to it, but I think you got to start simply and do the best you can with the techniques you have. And the goal should be to learn every part of the language, the programming language, every keyword. 
These are sometimes called re reserved words as well, because you can't name a variable print because it's reserved by, in this case, the language is called basic. <laughs> There's no bar in basic, by the way. So this is a hybrid of basic and JavaScript and Python, maybe. <laughs> but regardless, in, in whatever language you're learning, you want to learn every reserved word or keyword or whatever. Um, you want to learn every operator. And once you do that, you want to practice using them and kind of see when it's efficient to use one versus the other. And you want to think in programming, you know. Um, and it's fun. It's really a lot of fun. Most importantly, it's um, useful. Um, you can build really cool things. So if you don't know anything about computer programming at all, right? Computers are running the world, if you haven't noticed. So you should probably learn something. Um, you just start typing, and in Python, the the uh, the comment is this uh, ampersand or hashtag or number sign, and you basically uh, can start typing the comment like make a program, and you see it just starts typing. If I type press tab, it'll say that. But I would say something like this: make a program that greets nibbles and then asks how many treats to give nibbles. All right, now I press enter and now the whole program is written for me. And if I want to change it, I'll just go back up here and say that greets nibbles the cat. And then it asks how many treats to give the cat. Asks the user how many treats to give the cat. Okay, let's see if that works. It's not, you know, it's not, AI is sort of not perfect, but you can see it's a little janky, right? But it's okay. So print hello and program that greets Nibbles the cat and then asks user how many treats to give the cat. And you can kind of like modify this a little. Again, it's not working maybe perfectly like we'd want, but it gives you the right clues that this print command seems to hold some sway. And maybe there's some like, there we go. How many treats do you want to give the cat? And there we go. Treats equals int input. Cool, huh? And so if we run this, it'll run. This is obviously not an important program or anything. How many treats do you want to give the cat? Well, let's say five. That's it. Now we can use that variable and we can we can write like a okay output that you want to give the cat treats. Okay. And now you can see it'll output that much. So if we, you know, we can clear this console or all right, so I'm gonna say how many treats do you want to give the cat? Ten. So you want to give the cat ten treats. So that's simple programming. You're obviously not gonna be Jeff Hinton anytime soon just with this, but this is how everyone starts. Even Jeff Hinton had to start this way, right? Even Sam Altman, well, he's not a programmer, is he? Even the CEO of Replit had to start this way at some point. Maybe they started a long time ago, but you know, the thing about learning is that you can learn at any age. Um, you know, if you, if you keep a positive attitude, you can do anything. And nowadays there's the concept of a library. Kind of in the old days, you didn't have a lot of options you had to build your own code from scratch, but now you can kind of like look up these libraries of code and very quickly assemble large and complex programs from other people's programs so that you can really, the biggest word programmers use that's kind of difficult to understand is abstract. The more you use this word, the smarter you are. Um, when you abstract the concepts you don't want to understand, in other words, you let somebody else do them. You can focus on the couple of things that you uh, you want to you you're good at and you you can do and want to do, and you leave everything else to something else like a library, which can be risky, and you know you may not understand what's happening in the library exactly, but you still use it. Pascal definitely a classic, and I highly recommend everyone, especially younger people, learn as much computer programming as possible. What's up, Jake? God's gift. You want a sample? Is that what you want? Is that what you want right now? Computer programming is nice because it teaches you kind of how to think uh, systematically and procedurally. Replit's great. I'm, I'm shocked at how 
useful repletives. I hadn't used it in a while, and um, we want to start using it more extensively as an enterprise tool. I always thought it was like a JS fiddle, and it's obviously not. You know, they've put so much work into it and made such an amazing platform. How's it going to make you money? Well, you certainly have to build from here, right? This won't make you any money. But I was talking to two of my coworkers, okay? Get this. Two of my coworkers started programming and then doing freelance work, okay? These are both six-figure plus guys now. They started doing freelance work, get this, at 13. One of them's 19 right now. Um, so they're doing freelance work for clients at 13. Uh, neither guy went to college. And uh, yeah, you can make a more complicated program for sure using Ghostwriter. So that's a really simple program. You do something like import, I'm uh, able to try it like this, uh, process a list of, let's see, something that would be impressive here. Okay, let's try this. Print a histogram of the distribution of digits of pi up to 5,000 digits. This is a complicated program. Let's see if this works. It just wrote, I don't know, 15 lines of code. I wonder if it'll work. It's incredible. I'll be shocked if this works. That was well, well worth the $20. What the? No way. Come on, let's see it. All right. I'll be, I'll eat my hat if this works, but it looks like it's almost, almost there. I see these functions, but we never call the function. So let's call the function. I'm not a Python expert, by the way, but it's pretty simple. Let's see if that works. Hey, there it is. All right, so it did everything except the one thing, which is run the program. But it ran the program. And this is, I can't see it too well, so let me uh, maximize here. This is, wow, look at this. There's even a window here. This is a distribution, I think, of all the digits of pi, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If I modify this a little bit. And again, the point isn't that it's going to write you a perfect program. The point is now you see how Python works. You see that you define a function this way. They have arguments like this, right? You see that uh, you can call the arguments this way, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the point isn't that uh, it's perfect. Uh, the point is that you asked me, how would you go about learning programming? This is how. And programming can be beautiful, frustrating, mind altering, I don't know. And it can also make you wealthy, which, again, hopefully would not be your one priority. So if you started doing this and you hated it, it's unlikely to make you wealthy or happy. So you should stop. But if you did this and you say, oh, that's neat, I like this, then uh, I think this would be a really good start. Because I like books a lot, as you guys know who have watched me. But programming using books is not that great. You, you can do it. And I, I don't think it's that big of a problem. For example... Here's this one book. I got this in prison for my prison buddies. Uh, let's see here. And I gotta say, it's not a bad book. For a dummy's book, this is actually pretty good and pretty sophisticated. I mean, this guy's a PhD, so it can't be that bad. And actually, one of my first books that my father bought me at the computer store was... Oh man, I remember one of these. I need, I need to spend four, four or five dollars to get one of these. Q basic programming for dummies. I probably still have it around the house somewhere. Douglas Her Herbert. I think it's Herbert. Anyway, publication date nineteen ninety four. This was spank brand spanking new at the time. You don't have that book, do you? Q basic programming for dummies. Programming books I'd recommend. Yeah, so like that book, if you're trying to learn Python, that's a pretty good book. But if you're trying to learn programming from scratch, yeah, like a beginner's book is fine. And then like JavaScript, uh, there's a couple of decent books. It all depends on the language you're using. The really hard books to learn, the ones nobody reads, are like 
if you were like really, really, really smart and you want to, I still wouldn't suggest doing this, but reading the wizard book is, is not a horrible idea. And it's free. You can, you can go get this right now. Um, uh, I'd be shocked if anybody could get through the first, any beginner could get through the first uh, 30 pages of this. 50 pages of this. I would sit down and read this in prison. It's uh, It ain't easy. <laughs> I think you get through maybe 30, 40 pages, maybe 50. After a while, it gets a little mind-bending. Mind maybe past chapter 2 or 3. Not too much math background. But they, I mean, like trying to do factorials and stuff like that. I mean, nothing that. But this is kind of like real, real good background for computer programming, so you don't will learn any bad mistakes. But I think it's okay to learn bad mistakes. I don't, you know, I think you could always correct them later. Sales and trading is a good career to make a good amount of money if you enjoy it. Sure. You can learn more in prison than outside. I agree. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> the distractions will kill you every time.